Hello everybody, this is Talon, starting a new series that's basically a top 10 without ranking because honestly I already do enough of that. In full transparency, this is probably going to be a lot more laid back than the other series on this channel, but I think that'll be a nice change of pace personally. Anyway, I've had a decent amount of people ask me to go over what I personally eat on a regular basis. And I feel like it could be interesting to do a brief dive into my own diet, explaining my thought process behind it. So today I'm going over 10 foods that I eat almost every day. I can't quite claim every single day with all of these, but if I don't have them at least six times a week, something probably went wrong. I'm going to go over the foods themselves, how I implement them into my day-to-day -day life, what roles they fill nutritionally, and how they fit into the overall scheme of my meal plan. What I'm hoping you get out of this video is a more realistic approach to nutrition, that the best way to tackle goals is to find a balance between healthy and enjoyable for sanity's sake. Before we start, go ahead and let me know down in the comments what's a food you eat every day and why. And with all that said, here are 10 foods that I eat almost every day. First up, we've got ginger. Now, ginger is maybe God's greatest gift to this earth, and ginger the food is not half bad either. The most commonly consumed part is ginger root, which I'm honestly not sure whether to classify it as a vegetable or a spice, as you never really eat too much of it. Fortunately, most of the benefits of ginger you can get from just a few grams a day. The main benefit as it pertains to me is that several studies have shown the consistent consumption of ginger is shown to combat inflammation and delayed onset muscle soreness post-exercise. And it usually only takes about a couple weeks for noticeable results. I used to have a huge issue with post-workout soreness, and it not only made it physically more difficult to get back to training or even just physical activity, it also made me a lot less motivated to do so. So I started doing a bit of digging into habits and foods that could help me with this, and as a whole, it's dramatically helped. I'm not only less sore and in less pain, but it also takes place over less time. Now, this doesn't mean that ginger is some miracle food, this is more of a small dent that I repeat every day until it makes a bigger difference over time. A diet that you can follow consistently is going to be more beneficial than trying to take on all your problems at once. But beyond combating soreness, ginger kind of dabbles a bit in all of the health benefits. The main active compound is gingerol, which is responsible for most of ginger's health and medicinal properties. These include antioxidant effects, increased insulin sensitivity, anti-osteoarthritic effects, reducing joint pain and stiffness, lowering of blood sugar and the risk of heart disease, treatment of symptoms of chronic indigestion, increased serotonin levels, which are linked with reduced anxiety, reduced LDL cholesterol, prevention of cognitive decline in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, anti-cancer benefits, notably in the liver and pancreas, antimicrobial benefits, combating bacterial and fungal infections, and not that this really applies to me, but ginger is also shown to reduce menstrual pain and pregnancy-related nausea. I personally take just a pinch, a couple grams a day worth of pickled ginger, the stuff you get with sushi. And ginger is one of the only foods on this list that I can truly say I eat every single day, and a big reason why is that it's just so easy. Next is cinnamon, a spice with a similar concept as ginger, one that's intended to be eaten just a little daily to make a significant difference over time. The main benefit of cinnamon for me is that it's shown to boost insulin sensitivity, insulin being the hormone used for transporting sugar to the bloodstream. So cinnamon effectively supports blood sugar control and has a natural fat loss aiding effect. But beyond that, cinnamon is also shown to boost metabolism, prevent cognitive decline and neurodegenerative diseases, combat bacterial and fungal infections, and it's rich in anti-inflammatory polyphenol antioxidants. The thing that I love about cinnamon is that it goes on so many foods that you're already eating or realistically should be eating. Oatmeal, yogurt, coffee, tea, pumpkin, sweet potato, peanut butter, honey, protein shakes, pretty much anything that's even vaguely sweet, cinnamon goes really well with. Now this is very important. There are three main types that come to mind when I think of cinnamon. The first is cinnamon sugar, and I don't think I need to tell you that this is not what I'm talking about. The second is cassia cinnamon, and this is the most common type, though it is linked with liver issues and excess. And the last is Cylon cinnamon, and this is the one that you really want. It's more natural and is generally shown to be safer in larger quantities. Again, cinnamon is not something that you should be consuming a ton of anyway, but a tablespoon throughout the day can go a long way. And that's really not that hard, because it just tastes so great in so many things. Straying out of the spices territory, next up is eggs. I eat eggs almost every single day, usually in the form of scrambled eggs at breakfast. Eggs are among the most nutritious foods on earth, containing a notable amount of nearly every essential nutrient. The main highlight being protein. Eggs are my personal go-to breakfast protein, because while I do love me some sausage or bacon, they are often so fatty and the calories do add up so I don't have them nearly as often. 
Eggs are a very easy to consume protein, which I would argue is the most essential nutrient, especially for those who perform regular exercise. While straight egg whites go all in on protein, whole eggs, which I actually prefer, have a decent amount of fat as well, which is needed for brain and nervous function. And both of these are great for satiety, which I especially appreciate at breakfast, giving you a filling feeling until your next meal. This alone would be enough to sell me, but eggs go above and beyond by being rich in the brain-boosting choline, several B vitamins, and antioxidants like selenium, lutein, and zeaxanthin. Basically a perfect food that was destined to make this list. And sticking in the protein realm, next is white meat, usually in the form of chicken breast and turkey breast. I have been very clear about how important I believe protein is, especially in a world where I'm trying to build or retain as much muscle as possible, and there is no better source of easy lean protein than white meat. For me, they're on the cheaper end, and they're easy to prepare, and they're versatile, so I never really get bored of them. You don't need to have steamed or broiled or plain grilled chicken every single day to build muscle, those days are out. And this is a big reason why I believe learning to cook is so important, because sometimes there's some foods you just can't avoid. But if you can find a way to make it fresh often enough, suddenly your necessary evils become opportunities to experiment, and it can actually become quite pleasant. Pleasant is not a word I thought I'd ever be using to describe chicken breast a few years ago, but here we are. I guess that's just personal growth. The reality of it is, if you have any kind of aesthetic or athletic goal, there should be some form of dedicated protein on your plate. And I personally choose to include what I believe is the very best. That's not to say I don't like my meat to have a bit of flavor, because yes, I do eat red meat almost every day too. And this is usually in the form of lean ground beef. It's still very high in protein, but comes with more of that essential fat and certain micronutrients that aren't as prominent in white meats like certain B vitamins, zinc, and heme iron. But the most important thing really is the flavor. I love beef. Homemade burgers, beef burrito bowls, beef pastas, most anything. It really makes protein consumption so much easier for me. I personally usually have some form of white meat for lunch and red meat for dinner or vice versa and this really only ever gets interrupted when I have fish or some other seafood which I am always open to but my wallet often isn't. Drifting back to the plant foods, next up is avocado. Easily my new favorite fruit, mainly due to versatility. You can literally use avocado in anything, and I do pretty much every day. With sandwiches, burgers, eggs, burrito bowls, sushi, avocado toast, guacamole, the options are basically limitless. And it just so happens to be one of the most nutritious fruits out there. First off, being very rich in oleic acid, a heart-healthy, monounsaturated fat that makes feeling full a lot easier. It's very rich in fiber, and it's a solid boost in many micronutrients that I know I personally wasn't consuming enough of until I fell in love with the avocado. The only potential issue is that it's pretty calorically dense, so portion control is something that I have to keep an eye on, but honestly, I don't see avocado ever not being a staple of my diet. Now the next is the drink that I consume the most, and that's milk. The main reason being, I just really like milk. I never quite grew out of that phase. As far as what kind of milk, it really depends. I have no problems with the fat in whole milk. Fat is a necessary nutrient, and as long as you account for the extra calories that it's going to contribute, I say go right ahead. If you're looking to cut back on a few calories, reduced fat milk, skim milk, these are great ways to do it. A big reason why I have so much milk is that it's just so convenient. Using it in oatmeal, protein shakes, eggs, or just a straight up glass of it because it tastes good. And when I find myself drinking a lot of milk, I'll make an active effort to get a lower fat option. Milk is one of the most reliable ways to easily fill in protein gaps, and at times I do rely on it pretty heavily for that. But the benefits of milk go beyond that, filling in key micronutrients that are easy to overlook. Notably, calcium, phosphorus, B vitamins, and when fortified as it often is, vitamin D. Milk is just another one of those things that I don't think I'm ever going to stop enjoying on the regular. And filling in right after milk is cheese, another food that in my opinion just makes everything taste better. I tend to go for cheddar and Swiss, though that's mainly just a taste preference. Cheese is overall a very nutrient-dense food, but the trade-off is that it's very calorically dense as well, with the overwhelming majority of the calories coming from fat and protein. And it's pretty rich in several micronutrients like calcium, phosphorus, selenium, zinc, and vitamins, so as long as you account for calories, it's a one-stop shop. But the really good thing about cheese is that you don't need very much to enjoy the flavor. Another food that's not top tier that I have no shame in enjoying and eating as much as I do. Next up is the one condiment that I have on a regular basis, and that's salsa. 
This also goes with so many different foods that I eat on a regular basis. Most notably, it's my favorite topping for eggs and will always be included in burrito-esque foods. And I gotta say, salsa has no right being as good as it is, because it's got such a strong flavor for how low in calories and sugar it is when compared to most condiments. The calories are hardly even something I have to worry about accounting for. But salsa isn't just a calorie-less flavor enhancer, as the most common ingredients have some potent benefits of their own. Typically tomato, jalapeno, lime, onion, and garlic. A handful of fruits and vegetables that I've covered before and had nothing but positive things to say about them. And many other salsas are largely made of mango or strawberry, which are also pretty great, just not typically my go-to. Several of these are a good source of vitamin C, an antioxidant known for several health benefits, including heart health, and a nutrient you're most likely not getting enough of unless you really like certain fruits. And salsa is usually raw, so there's no risk of said vitamin C being destroyed by heat. Many of salsa's ingredients also provide unique beneficial nutrients like lycopene in tomatoes, capsaicin in peppers, citric acid in limes, and allicin in onions and garlic. Salsa is also a natural way to slip in some beneficial herbs and spices. All in all, salsa really is just the best at what it does, and it tastes great too. And the last food I eat almost every single day is Brussels sprouts. Just kidding, that's not it. I enjoy being happy. It's actually beans. I didn't think about just how often I eat beans until I started prepping for this video, but they're just so versatile. I usually go for black beans, pinto beans, or edamame. They're a solid, almost supplemental source of protein and a great source of several micronutrients like certain B vitamins, folate, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, and phosphorus. What really sells me with beans, though, is again their ease of use. They can be a tasty side dish and a good addition to bowls, chilies, soups, stews, or even salads. A reliable, nutritious, carbohydrate-based filler that I happen to enjoy. Overall, I don't think this video is saying anything too groundbreaking, but I think it's important to discuss realism and not just top-tier foods all the time. I said it several times throughout the video, but if your diet isn't something that you can keep up with consistently, it's not going to work. I believe your relationship with food is one of the most important ones out there because you truly cannot escape it. And I hope I demonstrated that by the sheer amount of times that I proclaim that I truly do enjoy the things that I eat on a regular basis. But there's also a reason behind all of it as well, because everything I eat also contributes to some sort of athletic or aesthetic goal or just my overall health and functioning. Me advocating for my body because realistically no one else is going to. I only ask that you do your best to find that balance as well. Now if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe because I've got plenty more nutrition-based videos on the way. Go ahead and let me know if you like this more casual, less organized video style, and if it's something you'd like to see more of. And remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body. You only get the one.